Welcome everyone, it's me, Matsmus. We are talking about Call of Duty. Whether you played it back in the day or still play it to this day with the upcoming game Call of Duty Modern Warfare coming out, they're pretty good games overall and I've actually really enjoyed playing them throughout the time that they've been made. But there is one mission that truly triggers me to no end when it comes to tank warfare. Now, I know these games are not designed for realism, but when they put so much detail and effort into these games, you'd expect them to work a little better at making the games at least somewhat plausible or feasible. And, you know, in this particular mission that we're going to assess today, uh, we're going to discuss how ridiculous it is. So let's take a look at the Severed Ties mission where you get to play as an Abrams tank crew. Do not deviate from your course. We need those tanks on point. Command out. So I guess before we get going, we're going to put a bit of disclaimer here, because I know many of you Call of Duty fanboys are going to be absolutely burning at the ears, screaming at your screen, saying, Matt, this is definitely not what you're supposed to do. It's a video game. It's, of course, not going to be realistic, and it's going to be arcadey, and it's there for fun. And that's why it's fun making a video about it, guys. It's not serious. The game is not bad. I actually really enjoy Call of Duty Ghosts, so don't get upset by this. But let's start off with the interior of this Abrams. What on earth? Earth is going on. I have no idea what's going on in this particular scene. So we have, for some reason, fully rigged up infantry soldiers with a full frag vest, tack vest, um, tactical loadout, night vision goggles on inside, deployed. Um, we have a radio pack on the back. This guy is prepped to go on a night patrol for 20 kilometers behind enemy lines uh, with Delta, but instead he's been pushed into the loading compartment. Uh, side of the turret of an M1 Abrams, which is, by the way, what is going on with the interior structure of this tank? <laughs> the breach is somewhat receded forward for some reason. Uh, the loader has been given his own map of the world, may I add, not just the local area, the entire globe, uh, and so many switches that I, I think he could literally launch the entire US arsenal of nuclear weapons just by flicking a few of them. Um, the loader is uh, somewhat awkwardly positioned, is just part of the absolute craziness that's going on here. Uh, the commander is about to grab what seems to be a commander's uh, CITV or commander's independent thermal viewer site. Uh, it almost looks like something off Ghostbusters, I'm not going to lie. And the gunner is not lowered down into the seat. So they're all on the same seating level platform. The gunner and the loader on the same level. So... Everything is flat on this turret. There's no re recess into the the hull itself. I'm, I'm really confused. So whoever structured and designed the interior of this tank, look, I get it. We're not here for realism. We're here for arcade fun. You know, get into it, blast stuff up and get out of there. But there's so much effort that's been put into this scene. And, and you know, the detail, the intricacies of this, this modeling. It's really actually beautiful. It looks really good. But why couldn't they just try a little harder to at least model the interior of the Abrams a little bit better? It just it doesn't look good, but it does look good. And as those of you who know what the inside of a tank of the Abrams looks like, you're going to know that this is kind of ridiculous and you just expect them to put just a little bit more effort into actually making it a little bit more credible as a tank interior and for the crew itself. Especially this guy with the night vision goggles. I don't know what's going on there. We got the green light. Prep all systems. Roger. Badge 2 ready. Working systems coming online. GPS is functional. Tanks prepped and ready. I got this side. Ready? Incoming. Multiple bogeys inbound. So once again, the visuals are beautiful. They've done a lot of effort into making this look really, really graphically beautiful. And the effects and the animations are looking really, really good. But again, it, some things just don't add up or make sense. The aircraft, which I believe is either a C5 Galaxy, it can only be a C5 Galaxy because of the weight that it's carrying, apparently two M1 Abrams tanks, has been strafed by a bunch load of bullets and somehow that has set the abrams in the front of the aircraft on fire which doesn't make any sense for the most part
Okay, so I don't know where to really start with this particular scene, honestly, but if they missed the drop zone, I don't see what they missed. Everything landed exactly where it was supposed to land for the most part, and they're about two kilometers away from, as you're about to see in the video, the objective itself. So I don't know what these C5 galaxies were planning to do with all these Abrams, but to me, it seems like they've launched them in just about the perfect area. And in terms of letting these things off the back of the aircraft, apparently you can launch one off the back of the aircraft, instantly the vehicle can just land on its suspension and drive off. Look, I know guys, I know it's an arcade, I get it, it's there for just fun, I enjoy the game, but they have to have some sort of consideration to the fact that a tank doesn't just roll off the back of a C5 Galaxy and then just instantly drive forward. There's got to be some realm of sanity when they're creating these beautiful scenes of tanks you know and this cool dynamic of tanks rolling off the back of aircraft but all of a sudden they just totally drop every instance of the law of physics at least where a tank can just instantaneously weighing 60 to 70 tons come off the back of a flying jet traveling at probably close to 400 kilometers now maybe more and just roll off and start driving there has to be some level of you know normalness that has to be brought into it and you know it's cool it's fine to get you into the gameplay quick and that's what they're trying to get at. they don't want to be messing around with you know dropping off the back of a cargo net and you know having to start the engine up etc it's i get what they're going at but it's just it's it's hard to watch bravo team is pinned down ahead of your position I don't know about you, but that's sort of the definition of irony, that the Americans are dropping tanks into the desert and destroying renewable energy of solar panels for probably oil, maybe? Seriously though, I know Abrams are pretty quick, but this is insane. These are like Ferrari, Lamborghini freaking tanks. Like, it's honestly, it's like they're drag racing Abrams. I get it, they want to get into the action quickly, but they could have made the dynamic of this mission just a little differently. Long range optics maybe, you know, we've seen it in other games, <clears throat> Battlefield, where they did really, really good at being able to make the dynamic of the game still quick and fast and high tempo, but not to the point where tanks are driving so freaking fast that it's almost like they've got like rocket boosters on the back of them. It doesn't make any sense pushing the tanks in speed and gameplay this fast because it becomes a little too obvious that they're trying to rush you into something instead of giving you at least a few seconds to, to think it out and at least understand that you're in a tank. You're not in a you know an off-roading uh, 4x4 truck. It's... It's a little crazy, they've gone a little over the top, I think, with the speed and the dynamics and the physics of these tanks going so fast, really. Enemy armor ahead! Keep it tight, prepare to engage! We have a visual on your rules! You can buy us a drink later, let's push them back! So this scene reminds me of a game called Tokyo Warfare. If you've never played it, give it a go. It's a lot of fun. It's and that's truly arcade tank gameplay. It is based upon the sort of old school uh, tank games that you could play in the arcades back in the day. A lot of fun. It's basically a Japanese shoot 'em up tank game. I've done some footage on it before, and here's a little snippet of that. Ha <laughs> ha! Beautiful. What is he doing? What is, what is happening? I feel like I'm the tanker of, like, LSD right now. Just fall off. Please fall off. Yes. <laughs> I didn't even have to do anything. He did it for me. Exact same kind of thing that it reminds me of. It's just way too fast. There's just so much going on. You're almost shooting your other tanks. The tanks are weaving in between each other's arcs of fire. There's, like, a thousand vehicles approaching over a hilltop that just came out of nowhere. Really, really, really funny, but uh, in terms of gameplay itself, I, it's not for me, but I know a lot of people enjoy it. I, I had some fun with it, but it's just, you're just constantly saying to yourself, no, that's crazy, that's ridiculous. Ah! And there you have it, folks. We knew it was coming. The tank just shot the turret of the other Abrams to the left there. 
it's strange that this has happened because normally the non-playable characters or the vehicles around you have scripted engagements, especially in such a fast-paced environment like this. I'm not sure if you were to play this again, and maybe I'll do an experiment, but if you play this mission again, would the same thing happen if you were to look in that direction? I'm not too sure, but there should be something that prevents that from happening because it just, again, totally blows the immersion of being in this battle. Like, your tank has just killed another tank, like, that's on your side. It doesn't make any sense. Why can't they just fix those little details? Like, hey, AI, don't shoot your other tank if your turret's facing that way towards another vehicle. It's just, it just looks crazy. And you want to talk about looking crazy? Look at the next scene. So they call that a pancake kill. It's where the Abrams literally just implodes on itself into the shape of a pancake. Look at the state of this, though. They put such beautiful dynamics in, you know, well, somewhat bouncing all over the place suspension like a freaking Land Rover. But look at the way they get destroyed. Like, watch this. What is happening? The tank literally turns into a complete black pancake. It makes no sense. There's so much visual, you know, effort been put in here. And when one of your vehicles blows up, it just turns into a gigantic block of charcoal. Craziness. It was only a matter of time before the Hinds started coming in and we're blowing out helicopters out of the sky. This is a twin rotored Hind, which is pretty cool looking. It looks like it's loaded to the teeth and you're about to see that they're actually going to uh, put quite a bit of firepower down on these uh, tanks rolling through the battlefield. But I've never understood games where, you know, you have the capability of shooting a helicopter down at Mach 10 driving along um, with your main gun. It would have been nicer that you could kind of man on the 50 as the commander or as the loader and start putting rounds down on it from a 50 caliber perspective instead of using the main gun. And it's from this very weird site that they've got adapted to the tank. Pancake tank number two. Literally the most effective mortar team in the world that's able to fire up to 300 mortars a second to catch up with the tanks that are traveling at 100 kilometers an hour around a corner in a valley. This is also a rather interesting scene where the tank has decided to shoot at the wall that is somewhat crumbling and then just drive through it at, you know, close to 49 miles per hour, apparently. I don't think your barrel's going to survive that one. Uh, I can see rebar in that wall. Again, I know it's a video game and I know it's there for arcade and it's supposed to look dramatic, busting through a wall. But if you're going to shoot at the wall and blow it through, then at least do that because that's not what happens in this scene. They fire at the wall, the wall doesn't break, and they bust through it with the main gun facing forward anyway. So, to me, that just makes zero sense. If you're going to make a dramatic scene, it should tell you, shoot the wall, you shoot the wall, and then it blows through and you can get through. If you don't, you crash and you blow the tank up, or you damage your gun or something like that. But no, they just combine the two most cringiest effects ever together. You're going to see a lot more of these optically tracking missiles throughout this gameplay, but did I just see that they fired one at that MiG, or whatever I think it is, I think it's an SU-35 or a MiG-29 or something, but they just shot at it and it didn't do anything to it, it just continued flying. Apparently it can take a full round from a 120mm gun and continue flying on its merry way. So the tracking missiles to me, it's not a huge deal, okay? It adds a little change to the game, a different variation of gameplay. 
has a little bit more fun in actually being able to see what you're hitting. I don't mind that. That's okay. It doesn't have to be like truly realistic. You know, the Abrams doesn't have that technology right now where you can actually see where a round's going. But it, it, that's a fun part of it. I don't mind that. But can you see what I mean by the effort and the attention to detail they've gone for everything else? It looks really good. You know, A-10s flying over the top, missiles landing, they're popping chaff, popping flares, you know, really cool ambient effects. But they can't get just the simplest of things quite right. And to me, it doesn't matter what you do to polish a poop. It's still going to be a poop if you don't make it look good from the very basics. So, you know, yeah, cool. You get to fire these nice anti-tank missiles and flying through the sky and see where it's going. But everything else just doesn't look right. It's out of place, guys. Copy Badger 1. Rally with 4th Battalion and run hot to Echo 3-2. High value acquisition underway in Foxtrot 9. Ghost team are active. Repeat, ghosts are en route. So really, this is where the game has shined. It always has shined in terms of its infantry gameplay, the way that you can kind of involve yourself with the special forces side of things. It's really cool, it's unique, it's fun. But again, look at the background. Look at the amount of detail they put into the different variants of uh, animation and effects they're putting in there. It looks really good. It really does. I mean... I'm not a big fan of, you know, the whole Modern Warfare world and the Call of Duty world. It's just not my scene, but it looks good. It's fun to play, and that's the key. It's being fun. Um, for me, though, fun only goes so far when I start just seeing the cringiest of scenes, the cringiest of moments. Um, and you don't see it as much with the infantry side because they can hide it with other things. They can hide it with, you know, more uh, intensive gameplay or more uh, cool cutscenes or anything like that and you know even things like this jumping off the helicopter it looks pretty cool pretty badass the weaponry looks really good but when it comes to the tanks i always feel like they get that side wrong infantry really good tanks not so good and let's get to the next scene ghosts have secured the sector missile is inbound divert all forces to primary objective Ford elements of b company will have air support at the ground array the aa gun will destroy anything in the sky including our missile our tanks are going to have to take those turrets out Command, we need air support at the bridge! Roger. A-10s are en route. Keep moving, Badger 1. The bridge is clear. Some interesting physics at play here. Tank traveling at 45 miles an hour can knock a probably 5 to 6 ton husk of vehicle 15 feet in the air, off the side of a bridge. <laughs> I don't know, guys. It's just, there's better ways of doing it, I think. They could have really thought about that particular cutscene a little bit better, of popping the vehicle off to the side. You know, it just doesn't look right. Push it to the side. It doesn't have to be flung like it's a cracker. You know, just it has to, a little nudge could have worked, or crushing it somewhat. You look at all the other beautiful air visuals, you know, the A-10s flying in, you've got these Apaches and Cobras coming in to support you. It looks really, really nice. And then you just have to spoil it with knocking an MRAP or whatever else it is off the side of the road 80 feet, uh, looking like it's a rag doll. Now everything about this scene screams YouTube advertisement with those mobile phone games where they're just like, oh this looks badass, I'm going to try this out. You go on to it and it's like Candy Crush but with tanks instead of candies being the object of the puzzle. It's just too much, it's, it's way too much, you've got this compound with huge walls and these massive guard towers and these massive superstructure radar arrays, uh, tanks charging through the front gate. It's interesting they've made these huge like defensive walls, yet the front gate is quite wide open with just some tiny little, 
you know, metallic chain link fencing. They haven't got any tank stoppers, anything like that, any kind of, you know, zigzag points. It's just, yeah, f fly on through, boys. No problem at all. We've invested a lot of money in our walling for these huge radars that cost us trillions, billions of dollars. But uh, in terms of the fence, we'll just put a little chain link fence up. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. And of course, no action-filled arcade-type game using vehicles would be complete without the inherent arcadic beeping noise that comes from missiles inbound to your vehicle or on approach to attack you or blow you up. And in this particular scene, we're actually seeing that the sighting has been broken. The glass is cracked, and that is some really good effects right there. A little crack in the screen on the top left there, defining that you're about to explode. <sighs> <laughs> Did you see that? This guy is not messing around. He does not want these radar rays to come down. He's gone over the top of the wall. Screw the gates. He's bouncing over the top. Okay, so in a scene previously, the wheeled vehicles could be bumped around like absolutely nothing and just be thrown around all over the place. Physics just doesn't exist. But then when it comes to later on in this scene, we come up against a vehicle that's traveling and in full swing of things, it actually stops the tank dead in its tracks. Um, you yeah, not too sure what's going on there. Payload is inbound to your coordinates. Repeat. Payload is inbound. Move your ass, soldier! Badger 2 is not operational. Repeat. Badger 2 is not operational. One of the crew is alive. Moving into pick up. Now, as they say in the show Generation Kill, where the Marines absolutely despise seeing slogans and catchphrases put on the uh, on the side of vehicles, this one's actually pretty cool looking in general, but it also is kind of cringe. You can see bleeding stars and stripes. We've got a rather cool decal of, like, you know, a skull and helmet, I guess, and the American flag. It looks really cool. Touched by the Reaper. I mean, uh, I don't know, guys. Just a little much there. And it looks like we finally came to the conclusion that the... Uh, tank main gun is not what's firing those missiles there's actually a tow launcher on top of the tank so i'll take my uh, i'll eat my words back a little bit more but i've never seen a tow launcher on top of an abrams before it's kind of an interesting uh, i guess feature and it has all sorts of explosive reactive armor on it but no bar armor but we did see bar armor earlier on in some of the other vehicles inside that c5 galaxy so a little confusing And it looks like this tow launcher also has a combined coaxial 40mm grenade launcher, which is uh, something a little special. One thing I will say, I actually had the ability to uh, manhandle an actual tow 2 launcher a little while ago when I did my visit to uh, Vancouver to hang out with uh, the squad game developers. And I got to see the tour of the museum there uh, of a local reserve infantry unit. And the machine is huge. It's a big anti-tank weapon system. And when you actually sit beside it or start moving it around, it's pretty freaking cool. But it looks like this guy can just maneuver and flip around a tow with a 40 mic mic on it all day long. These helicopters are literally like the worst gunship pilots you could ever imagine. They've got three fully equipped massive Heinz with pretty much every configuration of weapon system, optics, and missile, yet 
<laughs> they haven't been able to take out pretty much any of these tanks that are rolling through their entire compound. And they're just flying around each other in circles. Like, one of you shoot the tanks! So there you have it folks, one of the more cringy types of gameplay you can get when playing video games in tanks. But, you know, although it is arcadey, it's there to be fun and there to just, you know, have a blast and shoot some stuff. But the same thing applies with Battlefield 3, and they did a fantastic way of immersion and keeping you into the mindset of you're in a tank, you're in a tank engagement, it looks just crisper, it's just better looking in general in terms of the way tank warfare would be. And, I mean, just look at the speed of the vehicles, the way that they've defined the tanks being, you know, in formation and somewhat of a better idea of how tanks would go across the battlefield. And there's more development time, a little bit more time to be involved as being a tank crew instead of just being thrown off the back of a C5 Galaxy. It's just more, it's more fun in my eyes, and I really think they did a really good job of that. And I will actually be doing another video like this for the Battle 3 um, tank scene because I think it's a lot of fun to talk about the good side of tank gameplay in terms of arcade games as well as the bad side. I hope you enjoyed today's video folks. Once again please don't get highly offended and triggered by it. Don't get salty. It's just there for a little bit of fun. If you enjoyed the video please leave me a like and if you want to support my channel check out my Patreon page. All the other links and descriptions uh, for places and sites that I have are in the box below. Make sure you check them out. And if you want to be notified of any upcoming videos, please hit the little bell by the subscribe button to be notified of any upcoming videos in the future. All the best, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.